Back in March of 2020, Mark Cerny, the lead system engineer on the PlayStation 5, revealed to us the technical specifications of the storage unit, the NVMe SSD, that's going to be used in the PlayStation 5. Through a web presentation from Sony, where they revealed to us their vision for the PlayStation 5. And despite the generally negative feedback from the gamers, due to the overly technical content and not showing or talking about any games, because admittedly the primary targeted audience was game developers rather than gamers. No one can deny that Cerny provided us with lots of important bits of information about the NVMe SSD in the PlayStation 5. Something that, in my opinion, is going to be the biggest differentiator for next-gen gaming consoles, more so than the fancy numbers of teraflops for the CPU, GPU, and all that. Sony did follow up this presentation with a couple of showcases back in June and later in September, where they showed us actually games this time and impressed a lot of players with the quality of the games on display. However, we have yet to see from Sony a clear, simple, concise message about the real impact of the NVMe SSD in the PS5, which is far more than just faster load times. And this is exactly what we're going to analyze together and explain in this video, using simple, fun examples and even using one of the gameplay videos that we saw for the PlayStation 5. To truly appreciate the real impact of the NVMe SSD in the PS5, we must first analyze and understand the storage technologies used in the PS4 and the PS4 Pro, which today use a mechanical hard disk drive or an HDD. Something that we have been using in our gaming consoles and other computer systems for many years now, and it's a decent reliable technology but also a slow and old one, has been around for over 50 years now. This HDD can be compared to a normal slow car that is reliable to move things from one place to another but at slow speeds due to the slow mechanical nature of the HDD. And the game data gets split and stored in a semi-random way on the HDD from the inner edges to the outer edges. And the slow mechanical HDD head has to spin at relatively slow speeds to read this data and load it into the PS4's memory. The PS4 uses the storage interface SATA or Serial Advanced Technology Attachment to connect and transfer data from the HDD. So if the HDD was the slow car, SATA is the road with a single lane only to travel on. Which means that the process of reading and loading data on the PS4 is a very slow one due to the slow mechanical nature of the HDD and also due to the SATA interface which provides only a single lane or a single queue of commands with up to 32 commands per queue. And this has a direct impact on the loading speeds which range from 50 to 100 megabytes per second or 0.1 gigabytes per second and seek times ranging from 2 to 50 milliseconds. So if we go by Mark Cerny's calculations, we see that a one gigabyte of data would require 10 seconds to load using compression technologies, which on average speed things up by about 50%. This can be brought down to 6.7 seconds. However, Mark Cerny explained that at least to him and on average, the HDD could spend up to two thirds of its time seeking data, which means that in the real world, this could take up to 20 seconds to load a single gigabyte of data. So if we do some quick theoretical calculations, we see that two gigabytes of data would require 13 to 40 seconds to load, four gigabytes, 27 to 80 seconds, six gigabytes, 40 to 120 seconds. And even if we take the extreme scenario, which is unrealistic on the PS4, eight gigabytes would require 53 to 160 seconds to load. Immediately, we can understand the reasons behind the slow load and read times on the PS4. Let's now look at the PS5 and analyze how the PS5 changes this dramatically. The PS5 uses a solid state drive or SSD for storage. And it's a modern storage technology that uses flash NAND, something that we have been using in fast storage devices like USB sticks, uh, smartphones, tablets, and other fast devices. And thanks to the fast electronic electric nature of the flash NAND, compared to the mechanical HDD that is very slow, the game data now can be stored and read at far faster speeds on the SSD. So if the HDD was the slow car, the SSD transforms this car into a super fast racing car. And the PS5 uses the storage interface and protocol, the NVMe, or Non-Volatile Memory Express, via PCIe bus connection interface, which is also a modern technology used to read data from the SSD in parallel at incredible speeds. So if SATA was the road with a single lane, the NVMe is the highway with multiple lanes to read data on. 
And thanks to the parallelism in the NVMe, which enables moving large amount of data in parallel, this means that the process of reading and loading data in the PS5 is not only a fast one, but we can also load and read multiple data files all at the same time and at incredible speeds, providing up to 64,000 queues with up to 64,000 commands per queue. And this has a direct impact on the read speeds, which can now reach up to 5,500 megabytes per second or 5.5 gigabytes per second, and seek times that are pretty much instantaneous. Mark Cerny explained to us that the target for the minimum speed on the SSD is 5 gigabytes per second. So let's use that in our calculations. Now, one gigabyte of data would require only 0.2 seconds to load. Using compression technology, this can be brought down to 0.13 seconds only. And thanks to the super fast electronic electric nature of Flash NAND compared to the slow mechanical HDD, realistically, this time does not change much as not much time is needed for seek time. Mark Cerny explained to us that next gen games are going to be large with data starting from 2 gigabytes onwards. Keep in mind that most games will target 4K textures and large rich gaming worlds. So if we go back to our theoretical calculations, we see that 2 gigabytes of data would require 0.27 seconds to load, 4 gigabytes just over half a second, 8 gigabytes just over one second, 12 gigabytes, almost one and a half second. And even if we take the extreme unrealistic scenario on the PS5, 16 gigabytes would require only 2.13 seconds to load. So immediately we can understand the reasons behind the vastly improved load and read times on the PS5 compared to the PS4, thanks to using far more modern and advanced storage technologies. Mark Cerny tried to explain how Sony's vision for the NVMe SSD in the PlayStation 5 is more than just faster load times, but it is the key to break the old limitations and constraints on game developers, who were always limited in the way they designed their games and were never able to truly fulfill their visions due to the slow storage tech used in the game consoles. And he gave a very nice example in my opinion from Haven City from Jack 2, an old PlayStation 2 game. And the reason for giving such an old game example is that the process of designing game worlds did not change much from the days of the PS2 to the PS3 and PS4 due to the slow times needed to load the data. For example, back then they had to design the map in a way that it has lots of long twisting corridors to hide the load times as the player moves around from one area to the other. And this did not change much even on the PS3. We saw for example the long Long elevator rides in Mass Effect or even on the PS4 in games where the player have to duck or move slowly through a crack or a tunnel like in God of War, all of these are tricks to hide the loading times. This also has a direct impact on game mechanics, even basic ones like the speed of moving the player which have to be limited as it cannot be faster than the time it takes to load data into memory and this is something that it seems Insomniac games suffered a little bit from when designing Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4. Due to the fast swinging speed of Spider-Man as a superhero, they had to limit his speed and design the world in a smart way to hide the loading times in the background. And for this, Sony had to design a custom NVMe SSD for the PlayStation 5 that's even faster than what's available on most gaming PCs today. And this is to truly match their vision, where they don't even need to preload data into memory. Data can be loaded on demand as the player moves around. And I'm going to demonstrate this to you practically using one of the gameplay videos for the PS5. But first, let's remember that the PS4 uses 8 gigabytes of DRAM of type DDR5, while the PS5 uses double the amount of memory at 16 gigabytes of DDR6, which is significantly faster than DDR5. And there's always part of the memory that is consumed by the operating system of the console and other background functions on the PS4 between 3 to 3.5 gigabytes, which means that game developers are left with very limited amount of memory ranging from 4.5 to 5 gigabytes of data, sometimes up to 5 or 6 gigabytes, to load their game data and game files. Which means that game developers need to be quite smart in the way they utilize this limited amount of memory in the best way possible because loading data from the HDD to, to memory on the PS4 is a very slow process as we saw earlier. Moving to the PS5 and thanks to the multiple improvements on hardware and software, it's expected that the operating system will consume less amount of memory, 2.5 to 3 gigabytes, and with some rumors saying that it will consume even less than that, meaning that game developers are now left with much larger amount of memory to load the game data. 13 to 13 and a half gigabytes of memory and potentially even more, meaning that they can now create richer worlds that contain lots of items and objects, consuming more memory. 
And it's a number that might seem large and we might think that this is going to solve all our problems. But keep in mind that unlike a PC, this memory is shared between the CPU and GPU on the game consoles. And if next gen games are targeting large high resolution 4K texture files and are building large gaming worlds, this memory is going to get filled up really quickly. Which takes us back to the primary issue, where Sony had to revise its strategy for the storage technology to be used in the PlayStation 5 to solve this problem. And this is exactly where the NVMe SSD in the PlayStation 5 comes into play. The best practical implementation and demonstration for this technology is in my opinion the gameplay video that we saw for Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart in Sony's next showcase and later on in more depth in Gamescom Digital Web Showcase. The primary game mechanic in the game is the ability to open a rift around the player to move either between different areas of the same level or even between completely different levels and worlds. So if we take this gameplay video and we try to analyze it using the following diagram, let's assume that the different levels are these colored cubes that are stored on the SSD. And as explained earlier, part of the memory is always consumed by the operating system and other background functions. And upon the initial boot of the game and initial loading for the first level, represented here by the blue colored cubes, which is loaded into memory. And if you notice, when Ratchet moves through the rift, he moves for a temporary period into this purple colored world, which I guess we could call the temporary loading area, which can be represented here by the purple colored cubes. And due to the frequent use of this world to move between rifts, it's probably loaded into memory due to its frequency and its small size. And anyway, this is probably just a small animation that doesn't consume much memory. So let's keep it in memory. And the players begin the first level, starts moving around however they want, and a rift is opened to move into the next world. At this moment, the file or the game data for the next world is requested from the SSD and is transferred at incredible reading speeds via the NVMe interface and loaded in parallel as we saw earlier into memory. In this brief period the player is moved into the temporary loading zone or at least this loading animation is played until the data is loaded completely into memory at which point the player can be moved into this new world to move around however they want. All this process happened in a couple of seconds only. And the process continues. When a new rift is opened, the next level data is requested from the SSD and transferred at incredible speeds from the SSD via the NVMe interface in parallel, loaded into memory, and this time the player is moved temporarily into the loading zone, or at least the loading animation is played. The data is loaded completely in memory, at which point the player can be moved into this new level to move around freely however they want. Given that next gen games are going to target large, rich levels with high texture resolutions. Let's assume 10 gigabytes of data, which would require 2 seconds only to load. Using compression technologies, we're looking at 1.3 seconds to load only. Imagine we loaded all these complex, large, rich worlds in less than 2 seconds. In the other part of the gameplay video, we see Ratchet using the rifts to move around different parts but of the same level this time. And we notice that the movement through the rift is so fast that we don't even see that purple loading screen or loading area that we saw earlier. And this is probably due to one of two reasons. Either this area is already loaded into memory or the assets of this area are relatively small in size and can be loaded on demand at high speed. Referencing Mark Cernan's explanation of how the incredible speeds of the NVMe SSD enables streaming and loading the assets of the level that is around and behind the player as the player moves around. And he gave an example of how it takes the player on average about half a second to turn around. In this half a second on the PS5, we could load at least 4 gigabytes worth of textures and assets without having to to worry about preloading all this data in advance, like we do today on the PS4. And we can immediately notice from the different segments and areas of the level that we saw in the gameplay video, the incredibly large number of moving objects and other assets like the NPCs, the enemies, other creatures and other objects, and all at high resolution texture files. All these things would be consuming a large amount of memory. But on the PS5, you don't have to preload all this data in memory in advance. Data can be streamed and loaded on demand and as needed as the player moves around, which enables creating far richer worlds with tons of assets in 
within them, something that we don't see today in PlayStation 4 games, where you are limited by the incredibly slow mechanical HDD and of course the smaller memory size, and developers need to plan ahead in advance what assets to load into memory, which limits the number of assets that they could use at any given time. Let's implement this analysis into the following gameplay section, and consider that Ratchet is in area A which is already loaded into memory, Ratchet opens a rift to move forward, nothing happens because this area is already loaded into memory. As a general rule in games, if there's something showing on screen then it's loaded into memory, and if it's not showing on screen and it's far from the player, then it's probably not loaded into memory yet or just loaded partially. And notice how when Ratchet moves to his left, to use a rift to move over the train into the next area, let's call it area B, we can immediately notice the large amount of rich moving objects all at high resolution texture files, which would probably require a large amount of memory. So here what could be happening is that at the moment the rift is opened, the assets of area B are streamed and transferred from the NVMe SSD into the memory of the PS5 at incredible speeds as Ratchet is moving through the rift. Let's throw some admittedly exaggerated numbers just for the sake of this example and say 8 gigabytes worth of data would require around one second to load with compression, which falls in line with the amount of time we see here it takes Ratchet to move through the rift. And what's interesting here is that probably just for cosmetics, the time for the animation of moving through the rift is probably longer than the actual time needed to load the data from the SSD. And continuing in this example, considering Ratchet is in area B, which as we can see is filled with rich objects that are high in resolution and consuming lots of memory, and here Ratchet is about to move, turn around to move into area C, which has its own expensive assets to load. And here, what could be happening is that as Ratchet is turning around, the assets for area C are streamed and loaded from the NVMe SSD into memory at incredible speeds, as we can see here, as Ratchet is turning around and let's say that this is four gigabytes worth of data which can be loaded in as little as half a second with compression which falls in line with the time we see here it takes ratchet to turn around and later on we see ratchet moving through a big rift this time into what seems to be the same level but a different distant area and here we see once again that purple loading area or loading animation and this is probably due to the large scale of this next area as we can see here that is filled with tons of expensive assets, meaning that it would require a little bit longer to load. And as Ratchet continues to move around, traveling through the rifts and whatnot, the assets are streamed and loaded into memory when needed and on demand at incredible speed. Keep in mind that the process of designing game worlds and processing it and loading it into memory is a complex process and it doesn't have to work necessarily in the same way that we saw here. In fact, I might have exaggerated just a little bit that last example in the number of gigabytes, but I tried to simplify the concepts to deliver the message as clearly as possible. Now let's try to implement the same game mechanic but using the PlayStation 4 this time and see how things turn out. As explained earlier, the PS4 uses a mechanical hard disk drive which is very slow compared to the NVMe SSD in the PS5. And after the initial loading, initial boot, where the first level is loaded, the player begins at that level and a rift is opened to move to the different level, which is represented here by the red cubes. This data is requested from the HDD and the slow mechanical head of the HDD have to spin at relatively slow speeds at least compared to the NVMe SSD in the PS5 and this data is loaded into memory. At this point, the player is moved temporarily into the loading zone or at least the loading animation is played until this data is loaded into memory which as we can see here is a very slow process and the player is spending a lot of time on this loading screen. Once the data is loaded completely into memory the player can then be moved into this new area finally. Considering that the game data file is smaller on the PS4 due to the smaller memory, let's say 4 gigabytes which would require 40 seconds or with compression technologies would require 26.7 seconds to load and this is the best case scenario at best speeds and without factoring in other factors that Cerny spoke about like at the additional time needed sometimes for the seek times and so on. 
In conclusion, the most important takeaway from this analysis video today is that the primary game mechanic used in Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, in addition to the large rich gaming worlds that we saw, is impossible to implement today on the PlayStation 4 or on any game console for that matter, due to the vast difference in storage technologies between the two different consoles or the two generations. And this is once again, in my opinion, the best practical demonstration for Sony's vision and Mark Cerny's explanation of how the NVMe SSD in the PlayStation 5 is more than just faster load times, but it is the key to break the old constraints and limitations on game developers, to enable them to build large rich gaming worlds with new game mechanics that we never saw before, all of this to create new amazing gaming experiences for players that we never saw before. There are other benefits for the NVMe SSD that Cerny spoke about, but this video is getting long already and I don't wish to make it any longer for you. If you wish to have more explanation, leave me a comment below and maybe we'll make another video. And this is all what I had for you in this video today. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found it enjoyable, useful and beneficial. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, maybe share the video with your friends to help in spreading this channel and I'll see you next time inshallah.